Architecture has an immense impact on the environment and on the economy and on social issues, yet is very slow to respond, uses traditional design methods by doing everything as a one-off, Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Lightbulb, a program where we shine a light on one particular subject, giving you a better look at the topic on hand. This episode, we're focusing on parametric design. Parametrics um, is something that's absolutely fundamental to computation. It's the fundamental basis of an algorithm that you iterate something and, you, and it changes until something happens. Describing the fundamentals of parametrics was John Fraser former lecturer and researcher of Cambridge University and current chair for the Fraser Foundation for Accelerating Architecture. Having spent his career designing and studying architectural technologies, John said that parametrics originated not in the past couple of decades, but in the 1840s. A woman named Ida Lovelace described this computer program that had iterative process. It was indeed parametric. Of course, what has allowed parametric design to really come to life in recent years has been the evolution of technology. So how exactly do parametrics fit into the design world? Parametrics are the things that computational design manipulates to get what it wants. If you're trying to design a specific part of a building and you're thinking to yourself, okay, what is the solar impact of this area as I make this change? At the same time, you think, what is the cost impact as it relates to the solar impact, energy performance, and, and there's all these variables that really, once you start thinking about it, kind of almost overwhelming. Instead of trying to constantly think of all these possible conditions as you design, go ahead and let computational step in, plug in these parameters, let it generate a thousand possible solutions, then look at the top maybe 20 of the possible solutions and then design from there. As Justin Benjamin, design and applications manager at Perkins & Will said, parametrics are the things, or parameters, that computational design manipulates to generate an optimal structure. Nevertheless, parametric design has been credited in buildings with highly distinctive designs. So much, in fact, that some architects have begun to consider it as an evolving architectural style, otherwise known as parametricism. At the moment, it's a stylistic thing. It's coming over as just a particular kind of curvilinear geometry. Now, of course, some of that curvilinear geometry is entirely dependent on parametrics, but the converse isn't true. It's not true that parametrics necessarily has to generate curvilinear architecture. In fact, um, it could generate any kind of architecture. Hilda Espinal, CTO of Canon Design, agrees. I think parametric design could be used for any building type. I think today the idea is that because it requires a certain amount of uh, training and knowledge, you usually see this being used in the larger projects where there's uh, more at stake in the sense of time, schedule, money, etc., and having the availability of the experts. But absolutely, you can use parametric design in any scale. So if architects can design using parametrics in all buildings, big or small, curvilinear or straight, how then does one decide how the technology should be used? John would say definitely not for self-indulgence. Instead, he believes that architects should take into consideration what, in his opinion, all great designs should consider. All great architecture has been able to respond to the practical considerations. How is it built? What are the materials? What is it going to look like 200 years later? How is it going to weather? But how is it going to affect people? What is going to be the experience of moving through the building? How is it going to relate to other buildings in the context? And how is it going to perform environmentally? And John's not the only one who feels this way. Justin's colleague, Tim Bakos, Director of Operations at Perkins & Will, feels parametric design should be used to ensure buildings respond to and enhance the environments that they're in. It bothers me to think that a parametrically determined solution to something might be conceived by one who experiences it as arbitrary, because it's anything but. I mean, every one of those components should be there and in that precise orientation for a reason. And I think that could be lost if parametricism is determined to be a style as opposed to just a means to the end. You know, it's a tool. It's a tool designers can use to be environmentally responsive. 
Architect King Yang, one of John's former PhD students, has been a testament to using computational design in his buildings so that they respond to the environment and the user. Ken Yang was one of those who set about with his bioclimatic architecture, trying to derive forms which, although high rise and high technology, nevertheless responded to the environment and the user. And if you look at, for example, his library, you have this gorgeous sort of effect of a library between two streets, which is constructed to produce a gentle breeze between the two streets by a Venturi effect. And as a result, you see people clustered in the street underneath the library who aren't there to borrow books or read them. They're there because there's a cool breeze going through, created by the geometry of the architecture. Another example comes from Gianni Bosford, where we see how strict set parameters can result in a beautiful and responsive residential build. What's extraordinary about this building is it's completely surrounded with other buildings. And it had been a, a factory sandwiched amongst houses. So this building is it's entirely top lit and it goes down through several stories. And the problem was getting sunlight to penetrate right down through the house at different times of the year. And in England, in winter, our sun is quite shallow angle. In order to do the extreme complexity of playing off the light and the sun penetration and so on, this required a very sophisticated computer model. Whether such sophisticated computer modeling is used for primarily stylistic reasons or to serve a greater purpose, I think it's safe to say that the technology will definitely shape our future. And on that note, I leave you, for that wraps up this light bulb. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified when our next show is released. You guys take care until then. And thanks to our friends at Sage for making this episode of Lightbulb possible.